What's up guys? Welcome back to BT Willis Garage. So it's hot today. I'm in the house and I'm sweating. It's Saturday and 92 degrees and of course my AC unit decides to quit on me. So what I'm going to do today is teach you one, how to get your AC system back up and running immediately. It works 90% of the time, although you do have to babysit it. We'll talk about that. And number two, I'm going to teach you how to permanently fix your unit until it breaks the next time. Welcome to the channel. Just as a reminder, these tips are for HVAC techs, not necessarily for homeowners because you could electrocute yourself. So be very careful, follow my instructions, and as always, do this job at your own risk. Welcome to the channel, guys. Hope your house cools down soon. So step one, whenever your house is feeling muggy and not cool, is to check your breaker box and locate your AC. Mine's four and six, and it was indeed tripped. So you're gonna cut that back on just to step one so we can find out if we can jumpstart this thing to get your house cool. So go ahead and check that now. Next step is gonna be to come to our unit and make sure that we are indeed calling for cool air. So I've got it set to cool, and I've got it turned down lower than what the internal temperature of the house is. So the unit is calling for cold air. Next, we're gonna walk outside to the unit. All right, guys, so here's what we call the stick test. I'm gonna be using a screwdriver, but you can hear my fan wanting to start. And the reason it's not starting is because that capacitor's bad. It doesn't have enough juice to kickstart it. So what I'm gonna do is take my screwdriver and turn the fan counterclockwise. So I'm gonna push it to the right. And what you'll notice is once it gets that little pretty much help, then it's able to take off and do its job. You can feel hot air coming up. Um, and what we're ultimately going to get is clean air inside. Now that fan's moving way faster than it looks right there. That's just the camera playing tricks on us. But it's working and that will get you going. So let me stop right here and tell you this. You're excited. Your house is blowing cold air again because you jump start the fan, right? It's really cool. Again, when you get to your target temperature that your thermostat is set now, your AC is going to cut off, meaning the fan's going to stop. Whenever you need air conditioning, whenever the unit, the thermostat tells the air conditioning unit to turn back on, your fan's not going to start. You're going to be in the same situation and your fan motor will burn up because it's trying to turn and it just doesn't have enough power to get started. So word of caution, use that and then turn your unit off. Go outside and pull the fuse that I'm going to show you in this next step once you get to your target temperature and comfortable and then replace your capacitor. You can't keep doing that band-aid fix forever. You're going to need to follow the rest of this video after you secure the part. All right, guys, since we're about to replace the capacitor, it's extremely important that you pull your fuse. It may look like this. You can just set it up top or wherever. Or it may look like a regular fuse box where you flip a switch. But flip this one as well as your 12 volt that's running from the inside breaker. That one's not quite as important, but you might as well do it too. This is your 240 volts, which you definitely want to have off. So in order to locate your capacitor, you're going to want to follow your main harness that's coming in here. And I can see that mine's going to this box. So what I've got is a 5 16th bit, and that fits these little screws. So I'm going to go around and take off all the screws that are going to that access cover. You can kind of look in the inside too. And like I know I don't need to take this cover off here because it's just going straight to the coil. It looks like a radiator. But I can see all those wires going into this piece of the cabinet here. So that's where my capacitor is going to be located. Now if you see that capacitor bulging out from the top or the bottom, that's a sure tell sign that yours is bad. It may not do that and still be bad too. Pretty much if your fan's not taking off and needs a jump, uh, then it's your capacitor that's, that's gone bad. All right, guys, this is kind of a tough angle, but I think you can see what I'm going to do is loosen this screw that's holding the capacitor on up pretty good. I'm actually going to slide it. Actually, let me just take this screw all the way out. Again, I've got all my power cut off here. So I'm going to take that all the way out put it in a safe place. I'm going to carefully take my capacitor out. 
just like that. And here's what my new capacitor looks like. I can see on the side here that it says, you see beside my thumb, it says 45.5. So I went to the store and bought a 45.5. And I'm just gonna leave that kind of hanging there. I'm gonna match up my wiring exactly. So for example, I know that this is my fan. So I'm gonna unplug the brown and put it on my fan. Just kind of doing this at the same time. I know that this is on the top spade for the Herm, which is fine. So I'm gonna put it on the top spade for the Herm. And I see that I've got two here on the C, which I believe is for compressor. I'll put one there. One there, just like we had it. it. Might be helpful to take a picture of this too, just in case, but uh, now I'm gonna get it wired back up. Might end up fast forward in this part for you. Essentially what we want is that there and this underneath the wires because we don't want it to pinch. Something like that. And let me get that screw and I'll get that mounted back up. I won't bore you with watching that. Alright guys, I got it reinstalled and the clamp back around it. Wires out of the way. Don't forget to reinstall your covers, but I don't blame you if you want to test it first before you do. I'm going to flip my breaker back on inside. I just called for AC on my app and it was so quick to turn on that I couldn't even record it, but I promise you that capacitor fixed it. So now that you've got your unit fixed, let's talk about two simple things that you can do to make the unit last longer and blow colder air. One of those is going to be to switch to cheaper filters, which I know sounds weird. I'll talk about that momentarily. The other is to actually clean the unit with some Dawn dish soap or whatever dish soap you have laying around. So let's do those two things, but first let's take a measurement of the air to see what this does to the efficiency of the system, as in how cold it's blowing. I've got my digital thermometer just right on the vent and we're reading at 55.8. Now this is before the cleaning and before the filter swap, so we'll see what we get after that and we open up some airflow. So the next tip is to actually throw away your nice, expensive air filters. So I paid good money for this one and I just put it in on 510. And what we're gonna do is actually put in this less restrictive Flanders, just cheap, paper thin fiberglass filter because it allows the system to breathe better. These systems weren't designed to be able to breathe and pull air through that huge, expensive 3M filter. So these Flanders, I'll put the link in the description for the Amazon ones that I use, actually allow your system to flow better. And we're gonna prove that with cooler air coming out of our vents here shortly. So that's step one, replace all your expensive filters with cheap filters and be amazed at how much better the airflow is and the system's still gonna stay clean. So while you're outside working, it's a good idea to clean your unit too. So if you have an old bottle of dish soap, you can see about how much I have left in there. What I'm gonna actually do is just fill it with water. And this is gonna work as our cleaning agent. So I've got my soapy water that we mixed up earlier and I just pulled the fuse to the system. And what I'm gonna do is actually run it all around the top. You don't need to go all the way down because gravity will do its job. But we're just gonna run the soapy water all down the inside of the coil and the inside of the system and just let it sit for a minute. I'm gonna do it over here as well. And we're actually gonna flush this with water here momentarily, but that's really gonna help get all that grime. I'm in North Carolina, so I've got a ton of pollen that gets in there. And uh, this is gonna help to clean up our system and allow it to breathe better. So I've let that sit for 10 minutes. I won't bore you with showing you this whole process, but just start at the top and just run water on each side of the unit for roughly five minutes. 
just get all that soapy water and you'll see dirt running out the bottom you'll see nasty stuff that's good we want that gone all right get your whole unit top to bottom look at all that dirt nastiness just flowing out of there so after that filter swap to cheaper filters that are less restrictive and after cleaning the unit, we are nearly two degrees cooler with the air coming into the house. That can make a big difference on how hard your system has to work as well as how quickly your house cools down. So use that leftover soap you have laying around and cheapen up on those filters. Save yourself some money there. The system will still collect, you know, it won't get any hair or anything weird in it. Just use those cheaper filters. 99% of HVAC techs will tell you that. The expensive filters are just a rip-off and marketing ploy. Hope you got yours fixed. Thanks for watching BT Willis Garage. Subscribe for more content like this. I'm always up to something. You guys be good. See you next time.